All right, I get asked this question all the time is that I don't want to lose any more weight. I want to focus on building muscle, but I want to continue to drop my body fat. Now, this isn't completely impossible, but we have to put realistic expectations. If you're planning on building a ton of muscle and getting ripped up abs in a matter of four week span, it's probably not gonna happen unless you've already got there and we've only got maybe like one or 2% body fat to drop and you wanna see 1% muscle gain. But the majority of people that I speak with, the goal is a lot bigger than that and as such, we need to focus this on a long-term plan of being consistent. The other day, I was talking to this younger guy and he's doing it the old school way. He was bulking, right? And most guys use this bulking term to eat whatever it is that they want. And so what happens is it's summertime and now he wants to cut. So what does he want to do? He's immediately saying, I'm going to cut all my calories and go running. I'm like, man, that is the wrong method. You got to be consistent. You got to remember that you are what you consistently do. And so when it comes to trying to build muscle and drop body fat, you have to think of a 16 week plan of consistency versus just four weeks. Now, when it comes to your training, you do need to focus on strength training. You need to work on progressive overload. So when it comes to your training program, Minimum of 30% up to about 50, 60% of your training should involve some type of resistance training, whether that's jumping higher, moving faster, or lifting weights, and more importantly, lifting weights heavier than you can handle and doing it a minimum of three times a week. That's gonna keep the muscles fed with the strength, it's gonna keep them overload, it's gonna keep your body in muscle gaining mode. So that's key that you need to do strength and you need to be challenging yourself. Don't over your challenge yourself to the point where you're doing it wrong, but find that perfect progressive overload so that you're constantly challenging the muscles to get bigger and stronger. Now at the gym, we've got these half weights. So if you're stuck at the 25s for the longest time, go up to 27 and a half. That's the type of progression that you're looking for, not go from 25s to 50s. You're going from 25s to 27 and a half. Now you want to focus on keeping your cardio and it doesn't have to be running. Running is a great way for you to get your heart rate up and burn a bunch of calories if you're not conditioned, but that's also a great way to get injured, have repetitive strain, and take away from your ability to strength train. So don't just go out and start running. Like 5K, that's a lot. Like I can't even run for five minutes. Why is everybody running 5Ks? It doesn't make any sense. So you don't have to start running in order to drop your body fat. I would tell you that circuit training is a form of cardio because of the more work than rest ratio. What is cardio? Cardio means that you're working more and you're resting less. So my advice to you so that you can continue to build a muscle is incorporate strength training into a circuit so that you're taking advantage of building muscle but also burning calories from fat through the cardio. And then the last but not least is that you do have to be in a caloric deficit, but here's the thing. You don't wanna to go too aggressive. You can't just wanna drop 15 pounds of body fat. Like it's just not gonna happen that quick. That would be way too big of a caloric deficit and it can happen, but you're not gonna be happy and in fact, you're going to sacrifice muscle. Now we do have a hack for you to be able to keep your muscle in a caloric deficit and that's drinking those new EEAs that we have here at the gym and they're basically providing the amino acids that your muscles need to build and repair but that's not going to be able to solve all the problems from your caloric deficit. This caloric deficit that you need to have is going to be a very slight one, right? It's like 10% of your daily caloric burn and then you do another 10% maybe after about four weeks. Again, this is a 16 week cycle if you really wanna see these progress. It's not do a belly burn, and then you shred out all the fat and lose weight. And then now like you go to like high calories for the next three weeks until the next belly burn and you don't track your food and you know, it's completely lopsided. It's too much, right? The body always wants to cre create balance. So when you're doing your caloric deficit, you have to find that perfect amount that's gonna help you build new muscle while seeing less and less body fat every day. So I hope this video helped you guys. I hope that we really see some new muscle, that your body fat continues to drop. And please, before you go, give the video a like.